Jupe Vesterbro, Westbridge Christmas, episode 15, Duft Verstärkern, Scent Enhancer, The Scent Enhancer, Thoughts, another episode I love, though I will t discuss the uh, problematic elements of it. Uh, spoilers for these first 15 episodes, let's dive right in. So, yeah, uh, we open on the, the scientist, and... He he gets into the the shaming of Andy, which like like I feel like they're they're literally breaking character, like they're literally having this character go against like what he's saying is not like I I feel like a lot of the time the the bit with the scientists the the joke is that you know he is completely detached he doesn't make value judgments but here he says oh you know this this doll you know it, yeah he uses the fact that the the doll is not conventionally attractive to say that she must not be either making the bewildering statement that i think let's see i think what he says is that dolls are supposed to be i don't even remember if it's that they're, they're supposed to be prettier or less pretty than the people they depict. Like, first of all, a lot of dolls don't depict specific people. And yeah, there's tons of cases where it goes in either direction. You can't really make a broad statement about that. You can make a chick statement, but that's not going to help anything. Yeah, that just really felt like they, they felt like they hadn't quite squeezed enough misogyny into the episode and out of the character of Handi yet. Anyway... Uh, yeah, and, and you know, there, there's a discussion, she leaves with the money, and immediately after, Greta shows up, which again, just really underlines the fact that, yeah, they literally, like, the men writing this show really struggle to see women as anything other than financial drains and, and obstacles to be overcome. You know, that and, and like sex objects but but yeah the the um, yeah he gets into the the garage to get away from from Greta and knocks over the sausages so we get some more of the sausages being positively repulsive and the 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 thing about you know he's like the only way for me to get by now is for me to go into the street and sell my body and they just like it sure does look weird doesn't it? <laughs> he thinks he's talking about his body and he does make a decent point you know considering what he lives on it's, you know you you would expect him to look much much worse and let's see yeah and and um Kifia mentions the scent enhancer which, yeah, that's a, there's a, there's a concept that's, you know, obviously completely impossible, but the, the, yeah, I appreciate how, like, it's really gotten to be absolutely ridiculous, the kinds of things they'll say to, to cover up what they're actually doing with the hot dog stand. And we have a, a joke about Greta, you know, like, what Kifius is saying is, like, he's enunciating plenty. It's very clear what he's saying, and she's, like, acting like it doesn't make sense because she doesn't like his accent. So that, I, you know, yeah, that is how racists behave. And, you know, it is very clear at this point in the show she is incredibly racist. You know, in an earlier episode, she said that it's good practice to force black people to work for free. You know, it, it doesn't get much more racist. It's, it's like, it's a cartoonish level of racism, you know, there's, you know, at the time at least, it was less, like, honestly, today, it's, I, I don't think it's possible to actually parody, to say something that's more ridiculous than what racists are openly saying, but back then, it was a different time, it was 20 years ago, you know, at the very least, not, like, mainstream, um, but, but yeah, the, yeah, 
I appreciate when, when the show does jokes like that because we're clearly not laughing at Kefia. We're laughing at her. We're, we're saying, oh my god, she's being so ridiculously, like, what a terrible person she's being. You know, we're not laughing at the target of the racism. And then we have the, let's see, um, yes, yeah, then we have, you know, so, so yeah, she says, you know, we can, you know, the, the rent doesn't have to be paid immediately as long as I get a cut, you know, and Stuart's like, so you're telling me that you want to take my money after I work really hard earning them, and she's like, yeah, and he's like, deal. And then we have the, the song, which I'll admit is catchy, but, you know, again, it's just, it's really misogynist. Like, I don't think it's impossible to make a song that is chiefly about anal sex that isn't misogynist. I think it is hypothetically possible. And I'm not prudish, you know, I, I think it's fine to sing about sexual perversity. I think Tim Minchin has, has done really well at, you know, yeah, there's, there's several of his songs that mention sexual perversity without trying to turn, you know, yeah, without being extremely misogynist. But yeah, here, like, the song, you know, it's, it's, like, the core concept of just saying, you know, no more, you know, no more con conceiving of children, though, it's, I really hope that it's only the characters and not the writers of the episode that are this ignorant about female anatomy, like, this, this, you know, this could be one of those Reddit posts, like, um, I forget what it's called, but there's like a Reddit for like men who don't un bad fem bad women's anatomy, maybe something like that. You know, how would she possibly become pregnant again? She already is pregnant. She hasn't given birth yet. You just established that, and and Stuart's like, you better not get her pregnant again. I mean, it's gonna be like seven and a half months before there's any chance of that. But yeah. Hypothetically, the idea of saying, you know, you, you better not conceive, so you have to have sex in other ways. Yeah, that could be funny, but they have to go for this. Like, it's specifically about how he's going to try to force her into anal so that there is no conception. Because I guess anal rape is in their mind pref preferable to just abstinence I guess that they consider that completely impossible I mean I acknowledge the the it's kind of expensive to get a can't believe I'm blanking on the not a castration but the the other thing you know so a man can't get pregnant yeah impregnate a woman anyway but but yeah and this is another case there's not a huge amount but this and the the first episode, it does not, like, I'll grant that it, it appears he's, the, the actual, um, what, harmonica, I think it's called, it does look like he's playing that, but it does not at all look like he's actually playing the other couple of instruments, and it's like, I get that, you know, his hands are busy, the other character's hands yeah, busy in the in the scene, but it really does not look like, you know, I, I get it. They're, they're doing, they're, it's supposed to be like a joke about how gross it is to play that thing with your with your feet instead of your hands. Not that it looked convincing when in, in episode one when it was supposed to be his hands, but yeah, it's just, it's, it takes away from it. And yeah, as he's playing it, we have some jokes about, you know, Danny getting um, mani manicure, I think it's called, and, uh, you know, a shave, and they have a couple of jokes about, like, how it hurts him. I don't know if, I think those completely land. 
I, I'm not entirely sure why it would really hurt. Anyway, but the I, I will say it is funny. You know, after the shave, you know, Anna hands him the, the bottle, and he's like, okay, bottoms up, you know, and it's like, it goes on your face, you know, it's... It's not for drink, but, you know, I, I guess his nose is that good that he can tell, oh, it must be alcohol, or too stupid to, to think that it, yeah, anyway. Um, and, yeah, after, you know, yeah, some on his face, some under his arms, and some in his crotch. So that's, yeah, thing. Thank you for, for that mental image.